Hello again everyone, Saka here and welcome back to another episode of NASCAR Racing 2003 season, the 2019 mod with the 2021 car set. And we are here for the first of two races here at the Tricky Triangle in Pocono. We're on the inside behind Chris Busher in our Critical Road Camaro. Brandon just a few rows on the outside in that number 27 Mountain Dew Toyota. And Ryan Blaney is on the pole for 14 laps. This is the adjusted length. Uh, I think it's 130 laps on uh, Saturday and 140 on Sunday, but we're just doing 14 and 14. Green flag is out. And the longest straightaway in NASCAR, wide enough to land a 747 on, at least so they say, getting down into turn number one. And let's roll the bottom, try to hook that to the inside, get that run off, looking three wide behind us, Tyler Reddick and trying to get by William Byron. Brandon trapped on that outside behind Joey Logano. Nowhere for him to go. As we go down the long pond straight, we'll be getting a run on Busher. Thinking better of it, we don't want to go side by side in the tunnel turn. And Stenhouse takes a little look in front of Byron. Brandon gets down to the bottom, tries to make that pass. And turn three is very flat. Have to get it woed up and the car wants to pivot. Very, very snappy. But how you get through turn three sets up the entire straightaway and we got a good run on the 17, getting that pull off of Brandon. Under the 22 of Logano, 41 of Puster. And good run down the straightaway, almost topping out. Getting down to the bottom, leaders are sort of single filing out with Blaney, Truex and Bowman having a good run. Bowman needs to have uh, some decent runs to get into that top 16. He is within fighting range, but we are within fighting range of Brandon. Don't know if he couldn't get off of turn one well, but we're settling in right behind. Yeah, thinking better of three wide as Byron goes under Logano, under Custer, and that is a cluster that we do not want to be a part of. We'll roll behind Kurt Busch. Ooh, into Kurt just a bit, save it. So the AI cars are a little aggressive on the brakes. Getting into turn three, they can slow down a whole lot better than we can. But let's try not to let that affect our speed. Down to the inside, three wide. Logano up there still fighting. Kurt may roll out of it and let us in. Oh, and Logano with the cut. Yeah, we're not gonna throw our nose in there. We know how aggressive Joey Logano is and three wide behind us. That's gonna help us get down the long pond straight without much in the mirror. Okay, Logano goes to pass. Byron will follow Logano through. Give him a little push, trying to help him get that position. And we'll be all set up for turn at number three if we can get around these guys. Custer trying to fight back, so he got through that three wide melee. And much better entry on turn number three. That should carry us all the way through. But Logano gets to the top and we'll have no drafting help on the bottom unless Logano moves down. We're sniffing a little bit off of that rear bumper. And it looks like Byron is trying to sniff a little bit as well, not giving us any room on that outside. And we should clear him off of turn one right here. Byron rolls out. We can get out to the wall and uh, side by side in front of Brandon, probably De Benedetto, I would say. I don't think Ryan Blaney would have dropped back so far. Yeah, that is the Benedetto. Ryan Blaney still leads. Brandon on the rear deck lid of Austin Dillon. And we can actually take turn three a little bit better than normal with nobody in front of us to uh, stab the brakes. Brandon washed out just a little bit in turn three. But we should get that massive pull down the straightaway. Everyone pretty much single file down. And if we can get that pull off of De Benedetto and get away from Logano, all the better. Water temp starting to climb. And we're not really behind anybody, so we might have to pick out or peek out every now and then to get that temperature cool. We're right on the edge with tape. If it cools down enough down the straightaway or in the corners that we can uh, keep on running, then that is the right amount of tape that we need. Side by side up front, Kevin Harvick looks like he's trying to get around Truex Jr. 
And Bowman looks like he is settling in second. Yeah, Bowman trying to put up a fight. And with Brad Keselowski under Denny Hamlin, that's going to help Kyle Larson catch up and tow all of us up close. Really loose on corner entry. Couldn't get the power down throughout the whole straightaway here. Logano might be able to pull up to us, but so far even Steven. And we will need to come down to pit road uh, probably halfway at lap seven to split the tires as best we can. Uh, the race typically has a green feel. Everyone gets uh, spaced out. So I don't think anyone is gonna push someone into the wall, but saying that Bowman is right on that rear deck lid of Ryan Blaney, who is historically good here at Pocono. Not a surprise to see that 12 up front. Harvick having a decent run behind Truex, Kyle Busch right there, and Denny Hamlin. So the leaders are all within shouting distance. One mistake and someone's going to pounce. And side by side, that will bring everyone back to us. Logano trying to keep that draft as we're trying to keep the draft on the Benedetto. So we might have to pull a rabbit out of our hat here. They're extremely quick. So I'm thinking maybe just right sides. And if they try to take four, we'll be able to leapfrog them a bit and hope it's enough to hold on. That was a good turn one for us for sure. Logano dropping back and we are pulling up on old Matty D. And Brandon putting the pass on Keselowski, dropping him back. Let's get through turn three as best we can. Oh, Brandon really wide. Up into the wall, scraping, scraping. He finally gets it off the wall, but that's gonna hurt his entire straightaway speed. But we're coming down pit road this time. And I'm thinking right side tires. Get it slowed down. And hopefully we slid the right sides. <laughs> if we slid the left sides, I don't want to take four. But in we go. And let's go, boys. Right sides. I said right sides. There you go. Down and away. And I think Brandon might have got nailed for speeding. He's going to have to come down. Now, That's if, if a caution happens when they all come down to pit road, that wouldn't be a bad thing. And we did not lose a lap. Pocono is long enough that you can make your green flag stop, especially two tires, and not lose a lap. So a speeding penalty here isn't as penalizing as, say, Bristol or Martinsville, but it's still a massive kick in the trousers. So we are going to have to get all that we can get here. Brandon should be heading to pit road this time for his pass through. And I mean, if, if the yellow comes out while he's on pit road, then uh, we're all set. Everyone else will make their stop and he will leapfrog everyone and assume the spot. So the race is not over by any means for him. But let's see what we can do here all on our own. We won't have any drafting help, so we may actually be slower than the lead pack cars who are running together. I don't think right side tires are going to make that much difference on the lap times. What's really going to make it uh, up a lot of time is if they decide to take four tires. So we can hope for four tires. Brandon can hope for them to take four tires as well because taking two, he still has that amount of time advantage. And the cars look like they got pretty strung out, so I don't exactly know where he's going to come out in the grand scheme of things. But with no traffic nearby, I won't have to worry about them coming to a complete stop, coming to pit road, there they are. So not losing a lap, I believe all of these are four position. So we're passing Chase and Kyle Busch up to Hamlin and Truex. And Alex Bowman looks like he assumes command. And I bet they did take four tires. We're a little bit closer to Bowman than we were before pit stops. 
So we have to make these left side tires last a bit. If they're on fresh rubber, then they're in a much better spot than we are. Of course, all of the four of their tires will have to come up to temperature and, and pressure so we can pounce while we can under Harvick. Get slowed up going into turn three, outstanding. So let's see if we can pull off a of Blaney here. He and Bowman are going to be wicked fast. Ah, this is what we need right here. We need Blaney to hold up Bowman as much as possible. If Bowman can keep that right side out there and choke him down the long pond straight, we're going to make up a lot of time. Getting that power down, and indeed, they come off side by side. Neither one can have the good run. Oh, and if they go side by side through turn two, then that is where we can pounce in turn three for sure. So through turn two, made up a lot of ground there as well, getting that pull off of Bowman now. Yeah, we are set up well for turn three. So we'll follow Blaney on the bottom. But roll that outside if Blaney doesn't get up there. He does, so we'll stay in line. But we have made up all of that ground, and Harvick is nowhere in our mirror to be seen. We'll try to make the pass on Blaney, but like a plate track, we're sort of all over on our own down here with no help. In the corner entry, we have the position, and we need to clear him. Otherwise, we'll run into that same situation that he and Bowman were in and slide up. Don't know how clear we were, but that sets us up for turn two. Getting under Bowman, and I think our gearing is helping us out just a bit. And we can complete that pass, and Blaney tries to take advantage on the bottom. If they go side by side through turn three, we might be able to gap them just a little bit. Power through, touch the grass just a little. And looking in the mirror, still side by side. So we have to play, play the plate game. Which lane is going to come up? We'll move down to get Blaney. And it looks like Harvick was making a move on Blaney as well. Now, if they go three wide behind us, then we are in like a dirty shirt. Yeah, the longer Blaney can hold up Bowman and vice versa, the better off we are for sure. Yeah, still side by side down the long pond straight. This is exactly what we need. They can't use the new of their tires fighting like that. Looks like Bowman finally does get clear. Now, if no one puts any pressure on Bowman, he may start marching his way back to our rear bumper. And with the win, that would be the biggest thing for Alex Bowman, who is not guaranteed a spot in the top 16 yet. White flag, one more lap to go, two and a half miles around the triangle, and Bowman, we're breaking the draft just a little bit on that high lane. We'll see how we get through turn one. We push just a little bit, and Alex Bowman is glued to that bottom. Unfortunately, Blaney is not close enough to, to challenge for second. So it's eyes out front for Bowman, eyes in the mirror for us, and two turns to go. Because what turn four? Hashtag and all that good stuff. Bowman made up a lot of ground, the tunnel turn. We're going to have to be really defensive down this straightaway. Didn't overshoot turn three, outstanding. Should get the roll off. And we can block from here if we have to under power. And that will be our seventh win of the year here at Pocono 1, but not a gimme by any stretch of the imagination. Alex Bowman in second, Kevin Harvick in third, Ryan Blaney in fourth, Martin Truex Jr. in fifth. Looks like Denny Hamlin will come across the line in sixth. Let's finish the rest of your top ten. Seventh, Kyle Busch, eighth. Chase Elliott, ninth place, Brad Keselowski, and rounding out your top 10 is Kyle Larson. Of course, got to check on my best friend. Brandon comes across the line in 25th. So rallying back, unfortunately, the yellow did not come out. And I'm interested to see where 
in what section did he get did he get caught I believe the limit is 55 he was at 55 at the line there 56 57 58 he tried to slow it down a little bit there but it looks like he hit 58 right before we made our pit stops and unfortunately he wasn't able to rally down the straightaway and I don't exactly know how much we cleared him by but it wasn't much down to the inside and are we going to get a good camera angle here down to the bottom and oof couldn't really see does TV one do it justice probably not we may have to go to the rear bumper cam just to see how much we cleared him by so off the corner okay we didn't exactly uh, cut him off but we we cleared ourselves that's for sure and uh, yeah poor Alex needed a good run he got a good run but not the win he was looking for but the thing about Pocono is there is always tomorrow so let's take a look at the standings after Pocono that is our seventh win of the year and with Brandon's 23rd place finish that puts us in command of the points by one over Brandon in the regular season. Alex Bowman is now your cutoff driver, just three ahead of Cole Custer. 13 back to McDowell, 24 back to Reddick, 25 to Dillon. But to Benedetto, one race clear. So it's really a four or five car battle for 16th at this point. But we're right back at it tomorrow, back in Pocono for another 14 laps. So I hope you'll join me then. But that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you tomorrow for Pocono 2. Take care.